the municipality of Florence has begun a first phase of studies and researches to outline the future project to restore and regenerate the Fortezza Alessandrina or Castle of St. John the Baptist, commonly known as the Fortezza da Basso. A strong team of some of the most accredited institutions in the area has been formed for the occasion, with a memorandum of understanding among the City Council, University of Florence, Military Geographic Institute and the National Research Council Institute for the preservation and the enhancement of the cultural heritage. And so, I have had the opportunity and the pleasure of coordinating the work teams whose specific skills are being put to use to perform new surveys on this monumental building. Cross-functionality is the key word leading this study approach. With strict work methods and latest generation technology, historians, architects, archaeologists, topographers, and chemists are adding pieces to the jigsaw of knowledge at hand on the history, building techniques, materials, and state of preservation of the building. What's more, the symbolic worth of the building makes it a significant part of the city's history and the evolution of fortified architecture. As is usual, the first thing to do when we want to find out about a building is to analyze its shape and size, or in other words, make a survey. These days, a survey means producing a 3D digital model that is a dense and accurate sampling of the space, representing building and objects through points with known coordinates. So-called point clouds have become extremely popular in the cultural heritage sector and are applied at different scales, ranging from the landscape to small objects. But how are these point models generated? Unlike direct surveys using simple measurement tools to acquire the main brake lines in a two-dimensional world, instrumental surveys, which are the norm in geomatics or the set of disciplines that measures and graphically plot objects in space, always produce three-dimensional data. Today, point clouds are produced through the joint work of scanning systems, digital photogrammetry, and topographical surveys that guarantee high-quality results. And these clouds are the best possible way to document reality in its three dimensions. What we are looking at here is the 3D version of what photography was at the outset when it was first invented. In practice, the data is not interpreted in any way to produce this result. It is the product of a series of operations which, if planned and performed well, result in a three-dimensional photograph of reality. The first work was performed on-site by the Military Geographic Institute, which made the controlled topographic network. Given the large size of the Forteza, this step was indispensable to build the survey structure. The network consists of 40 vertices organized into three interconnected rings. The points were calculated using GPS with stationing times of no less than two hours and connected to a Military Geographic Institute main station. The mean square error obtained was less than seven millimeters. Points on the wall surfaces, target, were measured from these vertices and as a result, the subsequent detailed measurements could be referred to a single system of coordinates. Another key word in this work is integrated survey. The Fortezza is a training ground where new technologies can be researched and tested out to the benefit of the cultural heritage to find the best solution to quickly and effectively respond to the request of all the experts involved. Here, the Gecko Lab, which I oversee, experimented integrated measuring techniques. Photogrammetry and both ground and mobile scanning systems, that is, installed on a vehicle which went through both the inside and the external perimeter of the Forteza. 
All in all, over 3,000 images were acquired and more than 530 scans made. This resulted in almost 17 billion points, giving the position and size of every block of stone and brick in the three-dimensional space. The work is still underway, with testing of some of the most innovative systems like this backpack, which contains a series of what could be called wearable sensors. The freedom of movement that these gave enabled passageways of the Forteza to be explored which had never been surveyed before, resulting in the point model you're looking at now. Of course, the survey could not fail to include a drone. This will be used to survey the embattlements as soon as the weeds invading the ramparts and some parts of the curtains are removed. All the systems mentioned, photogrammetry, laser scanners, mobile mapping, wearable scanners and drones create point clouds, which as said, produce a graphic display of a list of coordinates within the same reference system used in the control network. This provides the start point. Somehow, it is a technology that provides new answers to old questions, but with the potential for greater accuracy and denser spatial information. At this point, we have a digital model a reproduction of reality which links all the disciplines involved. As well as the usual plans, sections, and front views, orthophotos are the basis on which the historians, archaeologists, and architects can note down their observations and propose their interventions. The value of the data acquired with these technologies goes way beyond the initial project intentions. It has the capacity to take the survey beyond its imagined scope as a metric device to also assume a critical and therefore interpretive role. And this is why there are surveys, plural, and not just one. This is a requirement that these technologies respond to well. The point model provides an archive of data that can be used in the future not only as interpreted documentation, but also, and even more so, as raw data, thanks to the intrinsic value of its density and accuracy. Although it was generated for a specific objective, this data's real value lies in the fact that it can be reused for additional purposes, which were not imagined upon its acquisition. This can include providing new questions and opportunities, and targeting new priorities, from storage to analysis, interpretation and accessibility, to public presentation.